Black Magic Design, creating revolutionary solutions for film, post-production, and television. Hi everyone and welcome back. We're at the Adobe booth. It's day three at NAB for us. I am here representing No Film School. I'm one of the founders of Cinematography for Actors. I'm Indiana Underhill and I'm joined by the wonderful, originally from New Jersey, I just found out, uh, Paul Saccone, who is the Senior Director of Adobe Pro Video Marketing. Hi. Good morning. Good it's morning. great to be here. Happy NAB. <laughs> I know. Happy NAB. <laughs> Under these more fluorescent lighting and Paul lights, um, my like dry skin is just getting drier by the minute. And I here, hear you. I'm the like desert. I'm like lip balm every time. Um, but I'm I'm stoked to be here at Adobe because everyone loves Adobe. Everyone knows Adobe. Regardless of the type of creator or filmmaker you are, you use an Adobe product right. and you you service the entire industry. Um, but I know we have a few talking points today. We do. Um, can you lead me through what you announced yesterday? Yeah. So yesterday we introduced some amazing new generative AI news coming to Premiere Pro this year. There's really three parts to this. Yes, the, yeah. The first part is that we are working on our own Firefly model for video. Okay. So like our previous Firefly models, our imaging and our vector models, they will be ethically trained on data that Adobe owns or has licensed or has paid content creators for. Yeah. So you'll wow. it, they'll be commercially safe. So cool. you'll be able to use them for commercial projects. So that's part of the first section. And then going along with that power, that is going to be used to power three new generative AI features that we're putting into Premiere Pro that we intend to public beta before the end of this year. And that's generative object removal, generative object addition, and something we call generative extend. Okay. Now, the object removal is exactly like it sounds. I don't know how many times you've seen that Starbucks coffee cups uh, left on that Game of Thrones yeah, scene, yeah, yeah, right? right? So, Everyone yeah. knows that. Or the boom mic or the reflection of somebody in a, in a window. So object removal will allow you to just simply create a very quick mask track it over time, and then remove that object using AI. Wow. So super cool, really, really handy feature that editors are going to love. Then we have an object addition, and this is where it starts to get really interesting okay. to me. So you could say, I want Paul in a dress shirt with a tie. Right. Or I want you in a floral dress. For sure. Or maybe let's change the A behind us and put a painting on the wall, wow. right? Yeah. So there's all kinds of cool things that we're going to be able to do with object addition. Um, and again, it's all about selecting or masking the area you want, tracking it over time, and then putting this into moving uh, moving images. We have a lot of people using the generative fill feature in Adobe Photoshop yeah. yes. today. We've seen all the demos right? all and the stuff, demos. The exciting stuff. You take a frame out to Photoshop, you do some generative fill to ex do a set extension, you bring it back in, the, which is a great workflow, but it it's only good if, you're if your shot is static. Absolutely. Right? So now what we're doing is uh, supporting moving shots right inside of Premiere Pro so you don't have to leave cool. the application. Now what are like some, if someone's like new to this but really excited about it, um, like what are either the ways of learning about this more? Like I know Adobe has some great educational content online. Yeah. Does that exist yet for this function? So it doesn't this exist feature? yet for this specific function, but yeah. it will be coming. Like I said, these are going to be coming into public beta by the end of the year. Cool. But we just introduced this week at the show adobevideotraining.com. Oh, okay. So we go love there. That. That's exciting. So we have an entirely new training website to oh. really consolidate and make it easier for our customers to find the great training that that they're looking for. Great. And now, what are like the big limitations with this with this kind of um, these features that are added on whether it be like you know the size of the part of the image that you're doing is it like do, is it limited to certain areas of the frame or like what you recommend the best use case is yeah so for the object removal and object addition features you're generally selecting a portion of the frame that you want to replace yes, or remove yeah, right yeah. Um, all of this is happening up in the cloud because it's really computationally expensive right it takes a lot of horsepower we throw a lot of GPUs at it so it's all going back up to the cloud and coming back to be done the third feature, though, that we're shipping by the end of the year, which I don't want to forget to talk about, yes, yeah. is Generative Extend. Okay. And this one, everybody, you've got to check out the video that's going to be linked in, okay. uh, in, in yeah, on the we, no Film School site. And it's playing behind us, and too, And it's playing right? behind us, yeah. Right. So Generative Extend is pure magic. So how many times have you edited, right, and you have a character turn or they're doing an emotional reaction and you want to hold for an extra beat? Or you run out of media and you want to add a cross dissolve and you just don't have enough frames to add that dissolve. Generative Extend will actually add handles to your clips. It'll generate net new frames, a couple of seconds on the head and the tail of the clip, so that you'll have enough media to hold for that extra beat or wow. to do that transition. Is there a maximum there at the moment? Um, so far, we're looking at like two to four seconds. That's we amazing. haven't we haven't set it in stone yet. That's but a lot of frames. It's, it's a lot of frames, and we just really want to give you enough to hold for that extra beat or to get totally. through that yeah. transition, right? For sure. Wow. So it doesn't Editors have to be a lot. Love you even more than they do. <laughs> 
<laughs> and some directors who are like, I just wish. I just, I just wish, wish I had a few more frames. Yes, yeah. as DPs, I know that like we're always like a director calls cut and we still roll, you know, because we know <laughs> the trick of like helping your exactly. editor and we know that that director is going to want that extra right. moment before the actor comes out of it. Right. And so I think this is great because not only is it helping out different departments on set, but it's also training younger filmmakers that you might want that next time. You might want that next time, exactly. So those three features, Generative Object Edition, Removal, and Generative Extend will be powered by the new Adobe Firefly model. And so that's the first kind of part of yesterday's announcements. Those are coming um, into public beta by the end of this year. So, and how do people sign up for public beta? Or what? Or is it general that everyone is in public beta? Our public betas are open to any Creative Great. Cloud customer. So cool. when you go into the Creative Cloud desktop application, there's actually an icon that you can click on to look at all of our public betas. And you can download a beta of any of our apps. And they run side by side with the shipping version. So you can install Premiere Pro Beta, and it's you know sitting right there on your hard drive next to the shipping version. And you can just open it up to kick the tires and try some of this stuff out. And, and hopefully give us feedback, report yes. bugs if you run yeah. into anything. Um, that's the point of the beta. We want to know uh, your feedback so that we can make these things better. Fantastic. Yeah. Wow, that's so exciting. Congratulations. No, well, thank you. Wow. Um, so the second part of what we're doing is uh, back in 2019, Adobe started something called the Content Authenticity Initiative. And what this is, is it's a way to add content credentials as embedded temper evident or temper proof, proof. tamper proof metadata. Is it like, oh, so it's like a metadata that you're adding. It's a metadata files. thing. Wow. And you can think of it like, you know, when you look at a box of cereal, there's a nutrition label on it yes right and so what this does is it says hey this clip was generated and maybe from one second and four frames to two seconds and five frames there were pixels that were changed with AI and it used the Adobe model or it used a third-party model or somebody else's model yeah so it's just a way to really be fully transparent when people are working with media and our applications and outputting it yeah so everyone knows these pixels were touched with AI, these were changed. Which is, I think, like a huge conversation over at the No Film School audience that I've been hearing is, is that people are like afraid of, like, is this gonna take my job? Or like, just questions around that. And I think that settles it in the sense of like, you are still the author of your own work, and you are proving that through metadata, which is such a big component of whether it's cameras, lenses, lighting, it's yeah. all existing as metadata, that, that that's not going to be taken away from you because we're saying like that was generated you know, by Adobe. This is totally the artist. And I think that authorship is really important. And so I love that you guys are keeping that. Yeah, yeah we, we think it's really important. You know, creators are at the heart of everything we do at Adobe, right? And so it's very important that we really are responsible and are doing the right things for the people that are using our products, yes, right? Absolutely. You know, Adobe was built with the creator community. Yeah. You know, that's, who, that's who we serve. And Definitely. so we want to make sure we're doing everything we can to ensure that you all know what is gone in and gone, you know, been changed in the footage you're working with. Yes. Or if you're changing the footage, we want to make sure that somebody that's receiving it can have some kind of an indication that tells them that the footage has been changed. Yeah. Yeah. So content credentials is kind of the big second part of our announcement. Great. And where will that go in the workflow? So like how does someone look at that information? Yeah, that's a really good question. So in the video that's looping behind us, yes. you'll check it out a little later. Great. Um, you'll see a little CR logo okay. in the top right cool. corner of any footage that's got the credentials applied. Yeah. If you click on that, it'll bring up the content credentials window, which will show you how that asset was created. Okay, got it, got it, got it. There's also ways to validate whether or not content has been changed. If you go to the content authenticity uh, initiative.org website, oh. they have a content validation tool. Whoa. So you can upload content and it'll tell you if it's been changed with AI. Wow. Right now it works with JPEG. Yeah. We are just starting to do the video integration in Premiere. Okay. So we expect that'll work with video too as you know as the year goes on. Wow. You know what I also thought this is really interesting because like for film festivals, I think there's a lot of people worried that like, well like if I spend money and I like make a movie and I'm really excited about getting it out there and then people are able to create it now in like these AI platforms without ever having to like leave their room, you know, it, it's how do we decipher the two? How do we um, maybe there's a new category for like AI generated movies or films separate, maybe they go together, yeah. that's fine. But at least people can like validate like, yes, if you're if it's only three or four seconds right now, eventually right. it'll be longer content and longer and longer. Sure, I, I mean I could think of it this way, you know, we've been fooled by visual effects in movies mm -hmm. for years. Yes. Right? There are plenty of things that we see on screen that don't exist in the real world. And yeah. you know, 
AI, in some ways, this generative AI is kind of similar. Yeah. You were able to generate new, new stuff. We're able to make it seamlessly blend into the yes. live action footage. It's not anything that we haven't been able to do in yeah. the past. It's just easier and more accessible to a larger number of people. I love this. Which is, yeah. which is why I think it becomes more important to make sure that we are accurately representing Great. when that footage has been changed. Yes, right? So, I agree. Yeah. yeah. So it's a big thing. We've been like talking, you know, at the hot words like AI, it's like all over NAB. But right. the thing that Haley and I, when we've been doing our interviews, is like, like, and I think it is, it's like AI goes hand in hand with accessibility. I think right. like the word we should actually be focusing on at NAB is like accessibility to the market. Yeah. Because we're able to scale now from like creators are able to do some incredible things with like whatever resources they have because of what companies like Adobe are doing. And I think that's just such a wonderful part of where this industry is headed. Yeah. And I think something like these generative AI tools are like yeah. a, an aid more than anything else. Right. And, and you know, we've seen this play out before in the past, right? Yeah. When you look at Photoshop, when it was new, right. everybody was like, what are we going to do? Now you can change photos, right? Yeah. But it really sparked an entirely new industry of people. Look at the transition from film to, to digital, totally. right? 20 years ago, the job of a DIT didn't even exist. Right. And so what's happened is every time you have these major inflections in technology in the industry, yes. the jobs and the roles do change, yeah. and it's always been additive. It's like we're adding more, we're giving people more tools, more yeah. ways to express themselves. Yes. And so there's this entire new culture and, and field, if you will, of people that are digital artists. Yes. And that just keeps expanding every time we add these new tools and make it more yeah. accessible. So I'm really excited about yeah. it. And I know like we work a lot with the Disability Film Challenge and it really yeah. enables them to to kind of you know, whether you're on the spectrum and if you're autistic, like, and you have all these great ideas, that, but you don't know how to make them a reality or you right. feel comfortable with having a large crew around you. This allows yeah. you to be like, I have an idea for a character, I have an idea for a location, I can learn this software, dive deep, and then begin to really just like pump out these stories that I've yeah. always had. And we have that a lot with the people that, that we work with. And yeah. I love that, that's really and exciting. It, and one of the things that I love about the way we're approaching this at Adobe, with our own model training, the ethical training of our models, the commercial safety. Yeah. Not every model is going to be commercially safe, mm -hmm. but then also the content credential stuff, and you know, really doing all we can to make sure that we're doing this in a way that is different um, and supportive of creators. Yes. Which leads me to the one last yeah. uh, big announcement we made yesterday. So many big announcements. <laughs> You're like, okay, here is my list. There's so many I have to get through. Here's Please don't list. let me forget. Right. Yeah. Um, so. We also announced that we are in very early explorations with the third-party model creators. So we're looking at integrating, possibly, third-party models from like um, OpenAI's Sora model, okay. Runway's Gen 2 model, cool. Pika Labs has a model, okay. and we've shown a demonstration in this video of how those models might appear inside of Premiere Pro. Okay. So not only will you have access to Adobe models, but if you choose to use a third-party model, and I liken this to you choose to use filters and effects and transitions that right. you buy from third parties all right, the time, right, right. right? This is just extending our open platform sort of ecosystem Ooh. mentality to AI. Wow. And that's another reason why content credentials become that much more important because you're going to have access to use different tools inside yeah. of Premiere or Photoshop or any of the other creative cloud applications yeah. that are gonna allow you to manipulate pixels with AI. Wow. So it's important that we pass through and we really are very transparent about how this data is is Great. being manipulated I and love changed. The viewpoint because yeah. it's like let's incorporate the other people in the world that are building out these softwares. Let's yeah. bring them into the process because it's a it's a huge part of our workflow is being collaborative. Yeah, and this is all a response to what editors have been asking us oh, for. Cool. Great. We've yeah. spent literally the last year um, deeply engaged with the community. We've spoken to thousands of editors. Um, we have a we have a, a community program for editors for pro editors and they have told us time and again that they want choice. They don't want to have to bounce out to different tools to do different tasks, right? Yeah. They're asking us to put these things into Premiere Pro. Yes. Um, streamline that workflow. Streamline the workflow. <laughs> it's all about workflow really in video, is. right? It is saving the time, and, honestly. It's and so, great. you know, it's been a fine line where that we've, you know, that we're trying to figure out here is what is the best, most, most ethical and trustworthy way to implement AI that customers yeah. are asking us for in our applications. Mm -hmm. So. Um, really proud of the way that we're approaching this so and I'm cool. excited about this coming to Premiere Pro yeah. um, the the object edition removal and extend features by the yeah. end of the year and the third party model explorations those are probably a little further out but um, what you'll see in the video that's uh, that you're either going to embed I in know, this I article peeking. or I know, I know you keep I'm looking like, at it back really there it's exciting to watch 
because now cool as I'm video. learning more from you, I'm, I'm like scoping it out. I'm like, yeah. whoa. Yeah, the, that's the awesome. The great thing about that video is all of the pixels in the examples are generated with our own Adobe Firefly video model that's wow. in R&D or um, with the OpenAI and the, the, um, the runway and the, the Pika models. So all the pixels in that video are actually generated by AI. So it's, you know, there's no smoke and mirrors here. This yeah, is yeah. real tech. It exists yeah. today. Yeah. And now we're going down the path of integrating that into Premiere Pro, wow. which is going to take us a few months. Um, and so by the end of the year, we'll be in public beta. Wow. Okay. One more question. Okay. Adobe stock. Yeah. Does, is is that going to tie into when people are like trying to get jewels? Like, I, there's jewels here. There's like T-shirts right. or there's video of landscape and stuff. Will it generate and license from Adobe Stock? Is that ever a thing or no? Am I so? The approach right now is we're just generating it from scratch. Oh, cool. Okay, so cool. our Firefly model has been trained on Adobe Stock because yeah, yeah, yeah. we own that, of course. Yes. Yeah. Um, but like in the video here, there's an example where we, you know. Who can afford to buy a pile of diamonds to put in a briefcase? That's, so, yeah, I was just, that's why I mentioned the diamond, the jewels. The jewels, yeah. the jewels, right. So we just ask Firefly, hey, generate a pile of diamonds cool. on black felt inside a briefcase, and it puts them in for yeah, us, and yeah. it tracks it as the shot moves. So no, it's um, while it's trained on Adobe stock, it's not using Adobe stock Got it. Cool. Uh, to, to fill in the... I mean, I, yeah, I just look at so many, you have so many different parts of the business it's like yeah. wild so i'm like you really can pull from like any part of your business to like integrate the workflow yeah. so i love it that's so exciting yeah. cool. i awesome. do have one last thing on premiere please, if you please, can please please uh, please yeah. yeah so um we introduced in january at sundance film festival um basically an overhaul of our audio workflows in premiere pro oh, okay got it um so ai based audio category tagging so it recognizes music sound effects dialogue nice. ambience and then surface is just the most important tools for you to work on that type of oh audio. Um, we have new waveforms, intelligence scaling and redrawing of the waveforms are absolutely beautiful. Um, and a bunch of new stuff like enhanced speech. All of that that was public beta in January yes. is shipping in a couple of weeks. So Congrats. we are That's getting that out in May. I want wow. your I want everyone to know go download the new version of Premiere Pro with all these great new audio features. Yeah. If you haven't tried them yet, they're game changing. It's the biggest audio overhaul we've ever done in Premiere Pro. People learn more about it. So on our website, adobe.com, it's all awesome. up there. Great. We love to hear it. That's like the biggest thing. I think it becomes daunting. You're like, I really want to learn it. And yeah. then you're like, where do I go? And so I love a company that can, and obviously, you know, you have the resources and the tools to create educational content that yep. is like the Bible for some people of like, let's learn about the, the overhaul that exists. Yeah. So that's really exciting. Congratulations. Thanks. And, thank you. And obviously, thank you to everyone that was a part of the beta that probably pulled and like pushed yeah, on all the stuff that they wanted, you know. And great response yeah, on that. Awesome. Thank you yeah. so much for meeting Thank with you. me. I really appreciate it. It's such a pleasure. It's been amazing. I appreciate it. Awesome. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Thank you.